Hello everyone and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We are continuing with our Mars window for 2022 and we have launched one mission that is currently on its way. It's uh, Mars Station 1 and we are going to launch Mars Supply 1 and we're going to continue focusing on Mars. So I'll introduce the launches for the next window, 2024. So we'll finally be getting into the future as far as in reference to when these videos are coming out and then we will launch those, but I think, uh, well, obviously the arrivals will happen first and then we will launch those. So let's roll this out. Oh, we have to recondition. So recondition, the window is technically in five days, but we won't, wow, that's taking a long time. Um, yeah, I think that might be too long. The window, August 23rd, I mean, we could do one or two weeks late, but that's more than two weeks, 23 days. So I didn't know Mars Supplies 1 would take so long. How's our staff there? We've got all our staff there. So, I mean, max of 2165 engineers. Guess, let's rush. Wow, I mean, it's got to cost a bit, but probably better to be safe. So that ejection longitude of ascending node is 350. There's not much inclination. So the last time, well, ejection delta V is 3,900 on this window. So this is not the greatest window for actually launching to Mars. I won't delete it yet, just for reference. Yeah, it's just baseline costs a lot compared to a lot of other Mars windows. Okay, well, uh, we'll launch and then we'll see when the right lineup is. Okay, right at dawn. Seems, oh gosh, it's suddenly gotten really dark here. Um, that must be a cloud. Why are the clouds so powerful? Okay, SAS on, throttle, that throttle's not working. Throttle up, and we can barely see our rocket right now. Okay, ignition. 18 Vulcan engines. Off they go. So yeah, just a supply mission. We're getting our supplies over there ahead of time. The plan is they're not going to spend a lot of time on the surface. Mostly they're going to be in orbit. Not great for radiation, but I don't know how it does the radiation anyway, so... How much safer is being on the surface of Mars compared to being in orbit? I do not know. And we're above the clouds. Okay, we should be through max Q. Still using the pad with a limitation of 1,300 tons. Okay, booster set. Nice and vigorous. It's the same HM7 stage after this, so we'll be using two engines from that set to finish orbit and then four engines to do the transfer. Worked fine last time, so hopefully it'll work fine this time. Okay, fairings. They seem to be clear. There's our supply vessel. We have a lot of little tanks slapped to the side because those are the tanks we tooled. <laughs> because those are the tanks we tooled. Yep. And they all have different requirements after all the water can take an aluminum gridded tank. But the food and oxygen... The food needs a service module tank. We just have service, service module 1 since it was cheaper even though it doesn't have good utilization. And then of course the propellants need the... Uh, high pressure tanks and the oxygen and nitrogen are in service module 2 tanks okay that's done next to HM7's Havlet and it's gotta take them a while but that's fine I left enough time to wap waps this I'm sure in fact pitching down a little bit yeah I think Pitching down a little bit is fine. Ah, uh, we could probably go to zero. 
All is well so far. We'll see how much Delta V it takes to actually do the transfer, though. We may need some help from the payload. Still only 5,000 data units so far on these. Okay, we are in orbit. We've got 3,953 meters per second left, so I'm really hoping that the transfer will take about that much. Let us see. Up 3,867, so that's pretty good. Transit duration, 356 days though. And actually it's 3,828, it says here. Okay, well that's pretty good. We're in good shape. This is lighter than the station, obviously. Well, let's activate the next set of engines, and obviously those RCS thrusters, and shut these down. We need to see the burn time properly. 15 minutes. Not easy. Not easy to plan for 15 minutes. Okay, make sure, making sure that the fuel is settled. And... Ignition. Hopefully that time is about right. But yeah, we are starting a bit early and I have to watch that periapsis. We are starting pointing at the surface quite a lot. So I may deviate from the maneuver node as necessary. Should be very efficient though. Very oberthy. Okay, 142 is about my limit there. We might be okay, but I'm gonna go to prograde for a bit. Okay, we're past periapsis now. I'll point it back at the node. No point taking chances there. Uh, pretty close. We hit the node with 2,000 meters per second left. So about right. Okay, I think it's using more than I was expecting now, but still within what we've got, barely. Let's see what happens. Hopefully we'll get an actual encounter. Oh, oh, it went there. It went there. All right. Okay, well, uh, that's fine. Let's just go retrograde and RCS it a little bit. Turning around. Okay, there. It's coming back. Still, a mid-course correction will be necessary. Let me go a little bit too far, turn around to prograde, and then eject off the payload. And off we go. So we don't have a bigger pad right now, but one argument for getting a bigger pad is just so that we can get these missions away quicker and build them quicker, because then we can have more employees at each pad and more engineers, right? Uh, right now we're constrained simply because we can't put more engineers on each rocket, and uh, so we can't roll them out faster, and so basically doing two launches of this size each time is the best we can do unless we create a new pad of the same size, which seems like a waste. Um, but you do have the other pads for smaller launches, but not for this size. So there is that. Anyway, let's get this into daylight, and then I'll plot the mid-course correction. We've got 2,600 meters per second here, which should not only help us to capture, but also help this to... Uh, well, we don't need to do anything else. Also push the station around a little bit. But let us see. Of course, my overwhelming concern today is to not say Duna when I mean Mars. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of the KSP2 stuff, so... Forgive me if I mix those two up, but Duna has figured prominently recently. It's always interesting going back and forth between the stock system and real solar system. Okay, well, the ascending and descending node are 
in line with our periapsis and apoapsis. That's what I want. Still 39 degrees, but it's okay. So we'll have a 15 meter per second correction. That's it for this window. And I'll be in 141 days. Seems good to me. And that's good enough orientation. Let's just kill rotation and hope it doesn't mess up the node. Yeah, I can spin down that axis. That's fine. That'll be fine for the whole time. Okay, so yes, this is on its way to Mars. And let's take a look at the launches for the next occasion. Okay, so this is a test Mars lander. This will be a crewed Mars lander. It has capacity for two people in the lander can advanced. And it has two stages in order to get back into orbit around Mars. Uh, landing isn't so much a problem, hopefully. Hopefully, we've got the parachutes and we've got these AJ-10 series advanced short nozzle 138s. Uh, they'll be good enough for this purpose, I think. Uh, though, yeah, I, I didn't think I liked these, though the Hydrolox one might be tempting. 18 ignitions with a Hydrolox engine, but yeah, none of them have any throttling. That's a bit of a problem. Um, I would like something with throttle. I'd like everything. Throttling, many ignitions, you know. But anyway, we're using these and we've got the Arizine and NTO and then we're also using Arizine and NTO up here with those little 3.6 kilonewton thrusters and feed pressure is okay and everything. So this is going to aero capture. Uh, the launcher has enough to send it over to Mars, I think. Uh, but then it's going to have to aero capture based on the information that we got on the test landers. It's got a ballistic coefficient uh, if we go mass over surface area twice that of the test landers. So it's actually, uh, well, we'll just say that much. Uh, it's got twice the mass on the surface area. So I can adjust for that based on the data that I've got. And hopefully we can get it into a nice safe orbit around Mars and then use its engines. We don't want to use its engines too much before them. Uh, because it's got 4,500, I expect to use about 300 to land and 4,200 to get back into orbit around Mars. That's the idea. Will that work out? I don't know. But we're certainly going to test about any crew first. And right now it's at 22 tons in total. And um, yeah, four of those AJ-10s. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Unlock cost 60,000. I think it's mainly the AJ-10s. Uh, let's see. Let's package it up again. You can see it's got air brakes as well and the ladder. I'm going to retract the ladder now. The ladder might be a little bit short though. Anyway, save that. And let's see, we build... Uh, oh, it's a lander can that we have to unlock. We've got the engines. And um, we also have to tool some tanks. Um... You know what, Let, let's remove it from the integration list because I wanted to tool these first. It'll take too long to build otherwise. Okay, so we've tooled those and now it's integrating. All right, so we're building that and it'll take about four months to build that. So we have time to, maybe I should build two? I don't know, I'll think about it. We'll get through the first one first. But one thing we can do is, so this will be the biggest Mars lander we can put if we use hypergolic fuels and use this launcher. I mean, I don't think we can push this launcher too much more than what we've got here, and hypergolic fuels aren't going to get too much more than what we've got. So, if we want something more out of it, if it turns out that this isn't enough, either we're going to have to make a bigger launcher, because it's all Hydrolox, or we're going to use the Nerva 2, or we're going to use different engines on it, uh, or we're going to assemble it in orbit around Earth first and then send it. So these are the possibilities, but that's a lot of possibilities. There's a lot of options here, and I'm not too sure which one will be right. That staging will have to correct when we do it. Oh, by the way, we one option that we do have that I didn't go with is we could use the HM7s again. Right now we're using the RZ-20s here again. They'll be less efficient, but more convenient because they've got the extra ignitions. And so HM7s could boost us up a little bit so that we can get maybe a little bit of extra mass if we if it's just a little bit extra that I think we need then that's an option all right but the next thing we actually have to do is to test that Nerva out 
um, aside from the lander, we could uh, send a different lander as well, uh, just in case the first one, some freak accident happens or I've made a mistake. Uh, but also I want to send more tugs uh, because we've got all these elements that are going to be floating around Mars orbit and they need to meet up with each other and the tugs are essential for that. And we'll get to that. But let's see about this Nerva 2 launch, I think. Okay, so the Nerva 2 launch is done, but as you can sort of tell by the rollout cost here, it's going to take an awful long time without rushing in order to actually roll it out. 87 days? Well, I'm going to rush it, but it's still till January. So we have to do these, well, at least the Mars Station 1 maneuver first. Gosh, well, I'm glad we picked a nuclear engine that restarts so we don't have to launch it so often. Clearly, launching these things takes a lot of effort. Why isn't the Mars Lander being built? Uh, all, everybody is dedicated to the rollout? Please rush this part too. <laughs> I, I mean... If I put more engineers over here, can you actually b start building that thing? Apparently not. So yeah, this is costing quite a lot now. Yeah, it's not just the rollout cost, it's also the rushing cost. So, nuclear engines could be useful if not for the fact that they cost a, ridicu a ridiculous amount to roll out and prepare. Hmm. It's definitely a strong anti-nuclear stance here in RP1 right now. Okay, well, uh, yeah, we have to get to Mars Station 1 and do its thing. Okay, still looking good here. Well, we don't have a lot of spare propellant with this. And this is a big correction, given what we have left. So it better be right. Uh, we don't really have an encounter with... Mars right now. Okay, well, ignition. Waiting and hoping that some trajectory will come into Mars SOI here. Up oh, there it is. Okay, well, relatively good there. Let's just replot the capture burn. It's good enough. Okay, so, well, not that much. We don't have that much. Uh, if we play our cards right... Capture can take as little as, let's say, 756. So, we have that. And right now, our panels are facing the sun. So, we'll just leave it here. And we'll add the SOI change alarm. Okay, we don't have to pay attention to this anymore. It's continuing on its way and we'll barely capture around Mars, but we'll deal with it at that point. Okay, continuing the most epic rollout here. Please actually start building the Mars lander. <laughs> oh, okay, no more rushing though. Now, when is the Mars window anyway? A little bit better than the one we just had that required 9,000, oh, sorry, 3,900. But uh, probably insertion will cost more. So we have time before the next window. But we would like to launch a lot more stuff. Okay, well, we don't have a particular trajectory to line up with. So I'm just going to line up with the moon, which is a good enough proxy for the rest of the solar system. And the only thing I can target here that would act as a proxy. And so, I guess we'll head out to a Lunar Inclination. Wow, it's wiggling. Not what you want to... Well, you know what? Um, we could probably launch in daylight on this side instead. Okay, uh, if it stops wiggling, though. Okay, need to make sure we can time warp safely. With our nuclear engine on board. Okay, we will launch. And we'll go 62 degrees, I guess. SAS on, throttle up, and 
Ignition. And launch. Up it goes. Our first Nerva. Putting it into a lunar-like orbit also means that if we do want to use it for something regarding the moon, we can do that. Shadows of the clouds passing us by. Okay, still looking good for orbit here. It is starting to build that lander, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, booster set. Yep, still looking good, alright. We could maybe carry a little bit more on here. I was worried because we were trying to go to a different in inclination than the natural one out of Kuru, but it seems okay. I should have put little separation motors on a nose cone and had it fly off at this point, but oh well. We are in space. I'll just turn off the center engine at this point. Okay, maybe a few more. We will leave the booster stage in orbit. We'll, we'll call that for safety's sake, since nobody wants us to ignite the nerve or Nerva early. Alright. We could have had Separatrons pushing it back into suborbital. Well, eventually it would deorbit. Anyway. Separation. Okay, well, I want to separate off the nose cone first. Okay, undock. Off that goes. Back to prograde, please. Now, our RZ-20s have limited ignitions. Uh, quite a few of them, but still limited. Um, I do think we could probably put this into a somewhat higher orbit than we've got it right now. In order to save ignitions, because we only have 10 with them, I'm gonna only use two. Okay, ignition. Um, there seems to be some differential stuff going on. What was, what are they not placed right? I can't really see. I mean, two of them pointing prograde. Well, anyway, that wasn't the best ignition ever. Let me take a look at them in daylight. They seem to be pointed the way I wanted them to be, but didn't act the right way. Anyway, extending the solar panels. I wanted it higher, but we'll just leave it here for now. And the radiators should be active, obviously. Hmm, since it says part cooling near 100%, probably we need more radiators. It wasn't clear to me how much we needed. But, it doesn't say that it's boiling off. RF boil off. Says none right now. Do we really, really have no boil off on this? I guess we're gonna figure it out. So, we have currently 337 kiloliters. I could use an exact number on that. Um, there's no little number thingy. Uh, well, now I missed the... Uh, the extra digits that we used to have there. So I guess we can get the mass. We are 63.791 tons. But the OMS engines are potentially a little bit problematic. You'll have to see because it was imbalanced. Alright, but the Nerve 2 is in orbit, ready to serve to push our payloads to somewhere. And But it isn't fully full fueled we can top it off a little bit. So right now it's not in the best situation. It's got limited delta V for the purpose, but we'll see. All right, let's just leave it be and we'll come back to it when we need it. It is 2.44 degrees off from the moon's plane though. That's a little bit sad, but it's not a huge deal. All right, so as a last little bit of business, we are going to do the mid-course correction with this supply probe. 
Well, I'll use a burst from the engines. Hopefully we can do that carefully. Okay, I think that's good enough. So this is on its way to Mars as well. Uh, that angle should be okay. The sun will tend to go into onto this side, I think. So I'll take that. SY change alarm is in. And our lander is under construction. But yeah, it's it's a costly business here, the whole Mars business. If I was tempted to maybe start building another pad, I probably ought to wait a little bit. I don't know if we're getting the money we need to not just build the pad, but also launch big things on it. Well, so I'll think about that. We've got 616 days until the Mars window, and we will build other thing, uh, other missions. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.